What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2021 Series 10. You hear that? Series 10. We're doing a Series 10 video and that's really exciting because a couple of weeks ago I actually released a video trying to just speculate on what Series 10 might be and it took everyone by surprise, no one really saw this rule set coming. But before we get into that, do me a favor, if you enjoyed this video at any point in time, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications because I bring you daily Pokemon Sword and Shield content, except yesterday because I was moving into this new apartment, so the acoustics might be a little bit different, but I think they're better than the space I was in previously, so that's pretty good. Yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. And also answer my comment question of the day. What Pokemon do you think will have the biggest rise in usage in Series 10? Before I can talk about Series 10, I figured we should, or talk about the Pokemon in Series 10, I figured we should talk about the rule set in general. So this got announced last night and everyone collectively lost their minds on Twitter. Series 10 is a return to a single restricted format. However, this time Dynamax is not legal. You cannot Dynamax in Series 10. So close yet so far to my dream format of Series 9 rule set, no Dynamax allowed. That is my dream format right now, but unfortunately that isn't what's going on. However, uh, that does bring to mind uh, a couple of particular Pokemon that might actually see some heavier usage now that Dynamax isn't legal and their counterparts, which would otherwise be able to outclass them, uh, are no longer as viable. And one of these Pokemon is Galarian Zapdos, I'm going to spoil that now. But let's go ahead and talk about this. So, what I have is five Pokemon that I believe are really going to benefit from Series 10 rules. Um, and why five, you might be asking. That's just because YouTube really likes it when I put top five in, in, a, in a thumbnail or your title or something. But let's start off with um, one of the, or two of the most notorious ones that people have been talking about. Uh, we'll start off with Shadow Tag Fake Out Gothitelle. Now, Gothitelle goes kind of crazy <laughs> in non-Dynamax format. Um, basically, uh, one of the new tools that Gothitelle got in VGC uh, as of Sword and Shield was access to the move Fake Out, which was originally, people thought it was going to be a huge game changer, but Gothitelle didn't end up seeing as much usage as people thought it would. And that's mostly because while Gothitelle is pretty bulky, uh, it's not bulky enough to be able to like wall out a Dynamax Mon and Parish Room, or uh, not Parish Room, uh, Parish Trap uh, wasn't as viable within a Dynamax format uh, because it was a lot easier just to go ahead and Dynamax and KO things. But uh, now that that isn't a thing, uh, what you can actually do is you can fake out turn one to block a fake out from opposing Pokemon. And, and if you're actually running Focus Sash, I, I mean like maybe if you outspeed like an Incineroar, which you can because Incineroar has a similar speed stat. Um, what you can actually do is fake out the Incineroar, beat it turn one, and then on the next turn, uh, go ahead and go for a Trick Room, which if they're not running Taunt, they won't be able to stop that uh, without doubling into you. Uh, and also, you're just a naturally bulky, bulky Pokemon, so uh, that's pretty easy. And now that you're able to trap things in, uh, it makes it a lot easier for things like Zacian to be activated. Like, Gothitelle Zacian is an absolutely insane combo, and I just heard someone like break something outside. But uh, the reason that is is because a lot of the ways that you would normally deal with Zacian is by like Intimidate Cycling with an Incineroar or a Landorus or just having smart switch-ins. Zacian forces the opponent to go on the defensive, start pivoting around and making sure that they don't lose their Mons. Uh, however, with Gothitelle on the field next to it, they have no option for doing that. You can lead off Gothitelle Zacian and if they didn't lead off with an Intimidator, they're going to have a rough time trying to beat that combo. So that's going to be really scary. So yeah, Gothitelle is going to be absolutely insane. Uh, my next pick is going to be Urshifu, and this is probably the most controversial Pokemon within the non-Dynamax format. So much to the point where when uh, we saw people hosting non-Dynamax Series 9 events, which uh, my buddy Rosemary Kelly actually did a couple of days ago, uh, we actually saw that they made the decision to ban Urshifu. Why is that? And it's because I've been saying this for a while. Unseen Fist is broken in a non-Dynamax format, along with Wicked Blow. Like, the combo of the two is absurd. So, one of the main ways that you would deal with Wicked Blow uh, was either to get in a good switch or just rely on your Dynamax Mon eating the hit well enough. On top of that, one of the best ways to block an Urshifu's attack would be to either A, switch out, let it hit something else, or B, you can just max guard on it, which is pretty big. It's mostly just the combined bulk plus the option to max guard that makes it so Urshifu isn't quite as oppressive in a Dynamax format. However, now, if there is an Urshifu on the field and it outspeeds everything, something is getting Wicked Blowed. 
hit or wicked blown. Something is gonna get hit by this move. There is no defensive play to it other than switching. And if you want to go Gatha to Urshifu, then there is literally no defensive play to that. So <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just like laughing thinking about that. Um, it's gonna be an absolutely busted combo in certain situations. On lead, it's disgustingly oppressive, uh, and people will have to adapt to do that. Um, we'll have to adapt to beat that, which is normal. Obviously, like, I'm never one to complain too much about a broken format. Uh, I will always just try to use something new to, you know, try to make my experience a little bit more enjoyable. Uh, so, yeah, I believe one of those adaptations that we might see is usage of Galarian Zapdos over Thunderous. However, Thunderous is still going to see some pretty heavy usage, mainly because Kyogre still exists, and being able to go with Defiant Wild Charge is still going to be really huge. But the fact of the matter is, this guy has no flying moves outside of fly. Hardly could come a flying type at that point, right? And its superpower, while powerful, is not a stab move. So, yeah, one of the main things that made Thunderous so powerful was its naturally high speed stat. You know, that's a thing, right? However, um, the thing about it is it was Max Airstream that really sort of put it over the edge. The fact that it could boost that speed stat after not having to fear and intimidate because you just have a defiant boost if they do intimidate you was a really big part of what made Thunderous viable. Now that's kind of gone, and while Galarian Zapdos isn't as fast, it's still faster than most restricted Pokemon. It's faster than the Weather Trio, uh, it's faster than Dialga Palkia, it's faster than pretty much everything that isn't like Pretty much everything that isn't uh, a Generation 8 Legendary, I'm sure there are some other Restricteds I'm not thinking of. I think Curum hits like base 95 or something, but 100 is generally a safe speed tier for a Restricted format prior to Eternatus, Zacian's Amazenta being released. Uh, so that's actually pretty big for it. Uh, on top of that, it is also a Defiant Pokemon, and it does have access to Stab Low Kick, which this is a move that we haven't seen a lot of usage in VGC since the... Um, since the beginning of like a Dynamax format because Dynamax makes running moves like Low Kick and Grass Knot so risky. There's a chance that the Pokemon you're trying to Low Kick or Grass Knot, while they would normally take like 120 base power damage, uh, if they Dynamax, they are immune to it, which was really crazy. So, Galarian Zapdos, while it could run Low Kick, it could also run its signature move in, um, what is it called? Thunderous Kick? However, I think Low Kick will see probably a lot more usage, mainly because in a restricted format, when you're facing things like Zacian, when you're facing things like Kyogre, Groudon, that low kick with with stab on it coming off a of base 125 attack is actually going to be devastatingly strong. So yeah, I think it's actually going to be a relatively good Pokemon. And while uh, Thunderous has to use Fly for its uh, stab move if it wants to run a physical set, uh, you know, this thing actually has access to Brave Bird, which is stronger than Fly and doesn't require it to Dynamax to come out in one turn, which is pretty nice. It also has coverage op options like Stomping Tantrum and Blaze Kick if you really want to run something kind of on the fringe of what's normal. Uh, however, it does have other really useful tools like Taunt and U-Turn. So I think Galarian Zapdos is going to see some big ups. And we actually did see in uh, the Flareon Cup, we saw a couple of Galarian Zapdoses running around. Uh, in the top eight of this tournament, even though it wasn't series 10 rules, it was uh, a non-restricted format. I think the fact that Galarian Zapdos saw heavy, heavy usage over Thunderous is actually a big testament as to how good it's going to be in a non-Dynamax format. Next up is Tornadus, and that goes without saying. Kyogre is legal. We no longer have access to max airstream on anything. Tornadus stocks up. Whimsicott stocks in, in that... You know, while we're talking about it, Whimsicott stocks way up. We don't have Airstream, we don't have any of that. We have to Tailwind now. Talonflame stocks, you know, that's questionable. It's, it's it's questionable, but maybe somewhere out there, someone out there would be like, yeah, I'll, I'll run, I'll run, ta I'll run tail, uh, Tailwind Talonflame. You know, maybe I'll do that. Maybe maybe I'll run that. Uh, but it's mostly Tornadus. <laughs> Tornadus is absolutely devastating next to Kyogre. Uh, and now that Dynamax isn't a thing, Kyogre can actually just click Water Spout a majority of the time. Like, yeah, Kyogre would click Water Spout before, but like I said, with Dynamax doubling the HP of everything, the overall bulk of the format was a bit higher than it is now. Uh, so Water Spout is a lot more devastating. It's not like anything can switch in on it comfortably or you can just Dynamax to live the hit and revenge kill it with like Assault Vest Kartana or something. Uh, now, <laughs> now Tornadus uh, with the Dynamic Speed tiers and having uh, a non-Dynamaxed um, Mystic Water, uh, Water Spout Kyogre next to it is actually going to be pr 
pretty devastating. So we've always seen Tornado see heavy usage in restricted formats ever since 2019, 2016, like all those years, we saw Tornadus be an important Pokemon because of its access to Tailwind Protect, Hurricane now being, or well, it's always been 100% accurate in the rain, but next to Kyogre, that's pretty huge. And Taunt being able to stop Trick Room, like all that's really huge. Finally, I think the last Pokemon I wanna talk about for this video is gonna be Amoongus. Now, Amoongus, while always good in a restricted format, it wasn't as good as it had been in previous restricted formats in the Series 8 rule set. And that was because it lost a big tool that made it actually really crazy in previous formats, and that was Grass Knot. Grass Knot, while it's not coming off the strongest attack stat, being, you know, 85, special attack is only 85 on this guy, it is a stab base 120, or it might go higher, I'm really dumb and I can't remember how high these things go, I think it's 120. Um, it is a very powerful grass type move that hits both of the weather Pokemon for super effective damage. Groudon absolutely hates taking a grass knot from anything, and Kyogre hates taking a grass knot from anything. They're not going to enjoy facing Amoongus as much as they used to because before, if they Dynamaxed, uh, they could eat a hit from it. Now they don't really have that option, and Amoongus is able to take hits from both of these guys. We've seen a lot of really cool Amoongus uh, sets in the past, whether it be Speedy Amoongus or just general slow uh, Regenerator Amoongus, uh, which, I mean, they all run Regenerator, but I, I really like Zoom Amoongus, you know, the Focus Sash Speedy set. Those are always really fun. Uh, however, you might not see as much as that or as much of that now that uh, we don't have Max Airstream anymore. But it still is a really good Pokemon with Spore, Rage Powder, all that redirection and sleep stuff is never not going to be good. And I guess a bonus Pokemon that just popped into my head since I was talking about um, Grass Knot shenanigans is Swift Swim Ludicolo. Ludicolo might actually be pretty good now. Uh, we've seen it be really good in previous restricted formats. And now that, you know, Fake Out is viable, <laughs> Fake Out became a lot more viable. It was always viable, but now it's a lot more viable. And Grass Knot is a lot more viable. I think Ludicolo can actually see a ton of usage. And, you know, you just run like a general Assault Vest set or even just run like a Life Orb set to get as much uh, damage output as you can with uh, this thing next to Kyogre. I think it's going to be really good. Uh, I'm really excited to see how this format develops. I think that uh, every Pokemon that you see on screen here is actually going to be really huge in the upcoming format. So, yeah, uh, those are just my initial thoughts. Personally, I'm pretty excited to start testing with things in a non-Dynamax format since I haven't played that since... <laughs> 2019. I haven't even played inside tournaments with that. Uh, but yeah, I want to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What do you think about the format? Do you hate the rules? Do you love the rules? Are you sort of on the edge of it? Sort of like I am. I'm like not really sure if I like it or not. Let me know in the comment section. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.